Greetings everyone, and today I will discuss common issues with this cheap IRS2022 module since I got a lot of questions about these amplifiers. So starting with the most common one, the stereo noise problem. You see, this amplifier sounds good in mono, but not until I connected the other one. So stereo setup is the problem. You see, the two input grounds are connected already because they share the same power supply. And apparently, it needs to be tied here to remove that popping noise. So I connected both input grounds here and it sounds good now. You might think that it is properly working now but there's a hidden issue here and that hidden issue is one of the board here is oscillating at around 44 kilohertz i will discuss more about it later now let's proceed to the frequency adjustment we're all familiar with these class d chip amplifiers which typically runs at around 400 kilohertz internally and class d amplifiers works with sine pwm unlike class ab amps and that sine pwm is the output from a comparator comparing two signals the input audio signal and a high frequency triangular wave now the frequency of the triangle wave is our switching frequency which will affect the efficiency and filter design of a class D amplifier. Now the IRS2092 chip has its own integrator for its PWM so the switching frequency can be adjusted by these streamers. And to measure the switching frequency, just probe to ground and the output of the MOSFET, which is before the inductor. You can use a frequency counter if your meter have one, just add a 100k resistor connected in series. Now power the amplifier board while probing and you can now adjust its switching frequency down to 100kHz. But how will it affect the amplifier board? Well, at lower switching frequency, the MOSFETs will be more efficient, so less heat for the MOSFETs. But the inductor will have to deal with higher ripple, so we will need to have a larger coil for this to be efficient, or else the coil will heat up if it's not properly designed for the switching frequency. On the other hand, if we increase the switching frequency too much, the MOSFET's efficiency will decrease because of switching losses. So the optimal switching frequency for these boards is around 400 kHz. So if your coil or MOSFETs are overheating, you might want to check this section here. Check your switching frequency since any damage to this section will overheat your amplifier. Now for the heating issue of the 10 ohms resistor, the first possible reason for this is if you power the amplifier and feed an audio signal without a load, you will burn the 10 ohm resistor which is part of a snubber network. The other reason is if your amplifier is oscillating above the audio spectrum. You can fix this by connecting a 1K resistor to each audio input signal in series. And finally, the clock synchronization. The popular TPA31 series has an option for synchronization. It can be a master or slave and the pin 16 is the sync pin for this. The purpose is to prevent bit noises if powered from the same power supply. I experienced this noise randomly from my previous DIY amplifier. So I think it might help the IRS2092 especially if operated in bridge mode. So to do that, we just need to inject a PWM signal to the left leg of R13. 
Here's the schematic and it says here that the self oscillating frequency should be 20 to 30 percent higher than the frequency that we're about to inject. I'm going to use a 200 pico fired capacitor in series with a 22k resistor. I will use my DIY LCR to generate 400 kHz PWM signal which matches with the 5V peak-to-peak needed. Here's the connection, the black wire is going to ground and the other capacitor leg goes to the 100 ohms resistor. Now powering the amp, you can see it's now switching at 400 kHz. Even if I adjust the trim put here, it stays at 400 kHz. Now let me increase the P PWM to 500 kHz and the amplifier follows. It is still working fine. I already tried both amplifier synced and it is working great. I will try to bridge this in an upcoming video for the final setup, so stay tuned for that. So I hope this video gives you another idea about these amplifiers. You can ask questions in the comments below as usual. Give this video a like and we'll do another IRS 2092 video for the next one.